Ahmar from Aussieland. I had a question on um, buying a house. If if you have already bought a house, um, and yeah, is it is it permissible to look at Islamic financing, or is it better off to just sell and be renting? Okay, first of all, it is totally prohibited to buy a house through conventional mortgage, which is haram, because this is riba. It's a riba-based loan. And what people say in the West, that we have a fatwa stating that the first house is permissible to buy through haram because of necessity, because this is a land of the kuffar, because this and that, all of this is baseless and nonsense. This is not true. And I am I'm shocked by the amount of people who buy such a fatwa and embrace it. Say, oh, Sheikh, it's a necessity. We have to. No, it's not a necessity. You can rent. There is not, not, nothing that's compelling you to borrow such a huge amount to buy a house. You can rent for the rest of the li uh, your life. I don't own a property with the grace of Allah. I am paying rent for two houses till date. I have no problem, alhamdulillah, and I don't have nightmares. Now, having said that, if you have a house and you wish to buy a second property, or if you're, I don't know what the circumstances are, but if you're interested in buying a second property through Islamic financing, this is permissible providing that this Islamic financing is truly Sharia compliant, not camouflaging riba, interest-based riba loans through the label of Islamic. So if they, that the bank, actually possesses the property before any strings attached between you and them, before any down payment, before any signature or commitment, they go and buy the actual property. And they call you a week or a month later and say, listen, the house you wanted to buy on street so-and-so, We've already purchased it and it's our, under our name. It cost us a million dollars. Are you interested in buying? You go and check. If they say we're willing to sell it for you over the duration of 20 years for $1.5 million and the price is fixed, there, is no, there are no strings attached at all. It cannot be increased than more than $1.5 million by one single cent. Whether you're late, you defaulted, the same amount is there. And if you defaulted within the process and you could not pay, we have the liberty to sell the property, take what's ours from the 1.5 million remaining and give you the rest because it's your house. If this is applicable, this is 100% permissible and halal. Diminishing ijara, which we spoke about before, and it's on the rise in Western countries under Islamic financing is permissible, providing that few glitches are eliminated, such as the insurance beneficiary. If I'm the tenant and I'm paying the insurance, who's the beneficiary? Why is it you? Why am I paying it? You want to be the beneficiary if the house is burned down to the ground? You pay the insurance premium in you get the benefit out of it. And likewise, maintenance cost. The tenant is never obliged to fix a, uh, um, a broken pipe or to fix the sewer or to fix the heating system if it's busted, the boilers. This is the duty and the responsibility and the ownership of the landlord. So if these uh, issues are eliminated, inshallah, it's halal and Allah knows best. And have you ever taken a, a counseling session with me? Go to my website and you will find counseling sessions and apply for one. If you can afford it, <laughs> that's good for you. If you cannot, you're entitled for one free session. And this is for everybody. If they can 
um, affirmed by Allah that they cannot afford it because they're poor, I'll give them one free session without a problem, a full half an hour. So come to me and let's speak about it, inshallah, within the following two days or three days. And bi'ithnillah azza wa jal, I will uh, 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 try and seek Allah's guidance to solve your problem once and for all bi'ithnillah.